Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. As you've probably seen by my recent content, I am really exploring the ideas of different avenues and practices within the witchy world. Those kind of aspects of my life have always been a regular occurrence for years and years since I was a little girl, but I'm really trying to explore different avenues, find my thing, bring you along on the journey with me, with me and kind of discover stuff together in a sort of documented, style like i want this to be something that is a learning curve for all of us and sometimes along the way i can teach you some stuff that i know myself and sometimes maybe you guys can enlighten me with some of your own insight and today i'm going to be doing some spell work um i think it's just something that i haven't had the time to do as much of i did some plant spell work putting intention into things I can physically see growing or being impacted somehow by my hands, like something I can touch, feel and hold is important to me. Physically, it's very helpful for me to watch a transition happening while I am creating a transition in my life. It's very symbolic, symbolic for me because you can kind of watch a physical Thing in front of you develop which itself is very magical the idea of creating life from a seed like what the heck that's why I like moon rituals so much and that's probably why the only spell work that I regularly do is moon rituals there's also another video of that if you're interested um, of me doing a moon ritual because you have physical evidence of something very magical happening in the sky which you're working alongside of has it bring brought about change Yes, in some avenues, very strong change and actually some changes that have made me realize I don't want them <laughs> or I don't need them as much as I believed I did. And there are some avenues which I feel like I'm awful at. It's funny how I, I feel like everyone has something that they're really good at manifesting and other things maybe not so much. So today I'm going to be trying to manifest something that I feel like I'm lacking in my life and I need more of and it goes alongside my career and my work and the sort of year that I am trying to work on. I've got my personal goals and my personal desires and they are all mostly sitting on a foundation of creativity. So I'm going to be taking part in a creative spell today and I'm going to take you along with me but I'm going to give you actual proof and evidence of the changes in my life that this spell will make. I would consider myself a spiritual person and I have for a long time but I am also what I would call a bit of a logical thinker alongside of that so I think with experiments like what I, what I do on this channel every so often need to come with some form of proof because I think that kind of connects people who are more on the logical side than I am into the more spiritual side that I also have and I think that's a really good way to like bridge those kinds of people across. If you want to see this box being unboxed I'll leave a link to the video where I did that but it's a it's a really decent one to be honest and I think it's really good for like baby witches. The stuff in it is, is unique compared to other subscriptions that I've seen but within this box I've kept hold of the massive box even though it's huge and taking up loads of room to remind myself that I want to take part in this creative spell that I'm going to be doing today. You will need a white satin pouch. Check. Cloves for clarity, check. Basil for creativity. Basil's good for like so many things. In general, I feel like I just need to get a lot of basil this year. Blue lace agate crystal for creativity and self-expression. It's a, it's a stone of self-expression and creativity, which I feel like is a very key part of my life. Oh, I believe this is I don't work with crystals a lot. It's not my strength. I believe that this is blue lace, but then this lapis, gosh, I cannot pronounce these, is very similar in that it brings about creativity. So to be fair, I'll use this for the spell and then I'll keep this close to me. Do also forgive me for my chosen instrument for this experiment. <laughs> it looks like a magic wand, actually. I quite like it. <laughs> Do I put the whole thing in? I guess so. Oh, right. I wish you could smell it with me. Mm. Basil. 
Now, my little sheet here does come with some words that you can speak. It's all about what is closest to your heart. I strongly believe that it's a very personal thing. So the fact I'm doing this online, I guess is maybe not the best idea, but people always say like, oh, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but that's like, you're missing the point if you're stressed about like instruction and things. Like I can add things to this satin pouch, which represents creativity on a personal level. I will be adding <laughs> cinnamon of all things, just because I've worked with cinnamon before and I do it because it's supposed to bring about change quicker. So with that in mind, with that intention, I'm just going to literally dust. I've got this crystal to hand here. I'm gonna just place it in my palm and sit with it a little bit. And while doing so, the chant that this sheet recommends is, I call to thee creativity, it shall be as I decree. Inspiration surrounding me, imagination is set free. So all I have left to do really is keep this close to me throughout the week, uh, keep documenting my progress and keeping the other creative crystal I've got close by as well. I feel like I sit a lot around this space in my home. Where do I keep this? <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna keep this simple. I'm gonna pocket it for now. Hello, you're going to have to ignore the madness that is my hair because my goodness. Um, I had it up in braids, now it looks kind of crazy. But I have an update. Two days after doing the spell work that I did on Friday, I haven't really had the opportunity to kind of test the waters and see if it's making any like immediate effects on my mindset because I got the weirdest illness. like but I've never had something that I had this weekend before. It sort of felt like what creative block, if anything, feels like on, on a high. Like I developed this like lull in energy, if anything. My throat, I don't know if you can still tell, I sound a bit like phlegmy. I felt really phlegmy and like, I had all this like plug, like gunk sitting in my head. And this past weekend has felt like me just trying to like get it out. I can't like breathe through this plug. I can't speak properly because every time I speak, like it just felt like my throat like chakra was plugged. I might even look it up to see what the hell that was. <laughs> I wish I just filmed my immediate reaction to what I just experienced. I just Googled throat chakra. Are you kidding me? When your throat chakra is blocked or misaligned, you may have issues with creativity and communication. What the hell? I didn't even... <laughs> I'm shook. <laughs> even though it manifested as a negative physical symptom, this kind of stuff to me is helpful because it proves some sort of existence or like, connection that I've got from doing this practice, if you get what I'm saying. Physically, symptoms may manifest as the following, a raspy throat, chronic sore throat, mouth ulcers. <clears throat> I might have to have a little look, look into this idea and see how that could potentially be affecting my creative flow, because this is really interesting. I've been really tired today because I was up quite late last night because my head was on the pillow and it was just racing. I'm currently in the middle of a uh, middle of a project that means a lot to me. I'm I'm creating like a program and a sort of like learning tool and some kind of community that means we can do something together. We can practice some things in like a communal way. Anyway, it's involving a lot of like planning and worksheets and designing because I have to like design like test sheets and quizzes and, and uh, fact files and stuff like that. Anyway, there's a lot of creativity that's needed around the idea of producing that and I, <laughs> for the love of me, could not sleep. Even though I was tired last night, my brain was like going off on some like overdrive kind of stuff and I was just thinking of new ideas 
for the um, packs that I'm making at the moment and it was just going in my head to the point where I was like I I don't want to pick up my phone and start writing all these things down but if I don't I might wake up tomorrow forget all of this stuff and completely regret and hate my life for doing it and so I grabbed my phone I was writing things down and then I had like it felt like a cobweb in my head of things all coming to me at once that I was trying to grasp onto before they left and in that moment last night when I was literally lying on the space here I wasn't thinking oh here comes that spell work I was oblivious to the spell work this is sometimes just what happens to me but it was happening to quite a high degree last night to the point I couldn't sleep it turned to 5 a.m. as I was setting my alarm when I finally like decided to determinedly go to sleep at 5 freaking a.m. I could smell cinnamon as I was setting my alarm and I was like that's weird as I put my phone back onto my bedside table, I chuckled because I realized, yes, Ellie, it smells like cinnamon because you literally have a bag of cinnamon here. <laughs> I've been taking this around with me in my bag, in my pocket. Being more mindful about where I'm placing this is probably a good idea because having it by my head, by my place of rest, where I should be using items that promote that instead, <laughs> is not helpful it's not allowing me to sleep so i can tune into my creativity in the day when i'm wide awake and conscious mindful and strategic about where you place certain item magical items i can literally show you the list i was creating last night um okay it wasn't five however it was four it was definitely five when i set my alarm though because i was fuming at myself Hello again, it is I with another update. I have been keeping my little pouch on the coffee table. This is where I work mostly. This is where I want to be very active. My, whoa. Here is where I want to run wild. Um, I want all my ideas to come sparking through. Some feedback that I do want to give around this experience and experiment, really. It's potent. <laughs> Um, I was worried that I wouldn't feel a difference, but I feel like it's hard to deny that there's a difference when, if anything, sometimes it's working against you because I feel like my brain is not going at the same pace as what my body and my energy is. In the same way that we organize meeting up with a friend um, with the knowledge that we also have something to do in the evening or an appointment is on that day and it might you know f, f with our energy a little bit or you know we can't show up on that day we've arranged something as our best selves i think that's kind of how we should use magic because i was quite you know willy-nilly with the idea of just like hoping that i'd feel a bit more creative this week but i feel like something about this has like amped up the way my brain is thinking and the pace my brain is thinking to the point where i can't keep up with it i need to kind of match up with my intentions so like i need to consciously make decisions with my body and what i choose to do such as going to bed early if i intend to have a creative active mind but i wrote some <laughs> words which i don't know if you want to call this poetry an, an article or just thoughts from my heart and from my mind about mindfulness you might have noticed on this channel i talk about it a lot it has absolutely changed my life and i'm editing another romanticize your life video i've done one a few before where it's like a vlog it's a day of my life but through the eyes of someone who's trying to be mindful taking in the textures the colors the beauty of simply washing up and and enjoying the steam that comes off of your hand while you do that so i thought I'll, I'll create some sort of piece that can be spoken throughout the video and i've never wrote something before that gave my own self goosebumps that sounds very va uh, vain but i've never uh, that's just fact i've never done it before i've read other people's art and listened to other people's stuff and and i've got shivers from that and goosebumps from that but my own thing like it, it felt like i was connecting to what i believe and feel better than i've ever done before and i actually looked into throat chakra and like trans transitioning your thoughts your creative mind into your mouth and there's a lot of interesting stuff about this 
it's interesting when I do spell related stuff what ultimately comes from them more than maybe abundance or something material is actually the lessons beyond that so I feel like every time I've done a spell it's connected me closer to who I am what the point is and maybe my reasoning behind why I want certain things so in a way to be careful what you wish for like dig deeper about why you're wanting this attraction it's teaching me a whole lot to do with expression trusting in that flow and the way I think and the way I show up I'm actually going to be doing a money spell firstly we have my yoga mat that I'm on just because it's comfortable and I want to do this from the floor. I've got my tarot cards, I've got a dish, I've got this little item here that I'm going to be sketching some writing into my candle with. This was actually my nan's, I felt like um, that's almost like a connection to my ancestors. This dish is for the oil that I will be, will be putting into it. Later on I've got a green candle because I'm trying to mostly use green items. I've got some matches and I've placed a coin here. <coughs> Oops, I won't be using those, I won't be lighting those. I'm just going to be using this long candle here, which I will be sketching something into. Two dishes, green dishes, and I'm gonna be using them for the herbs. I've got some basil and some thyme and some cinnamon and some <laughs> table salt. Uh, so, oh, and just sage to kind of smoke cleanse like start from a blank canvas um, and also cleanse the cards because I'll be basically using a card to represent the money that I want to be bringing in so maybe some cards that are very focused on pentacles maybe the wheel of fortune I'll be placing the herbs into their little dishes here taking this candle and rolling it into the oil and then I'll just be sprinkling sprinkling each herb onto the dish rolling the candle into the dish so it's completely covered in herbs basil represents money always like has done to me it's the money making herb um thyme as well good fortune cinnamon to quicken things up and it's also associated to career and salt as well will go in for protection this keeps it very career related you know i don't want to be inheriting any money from something terrible happening to those around me that i love and then when i feel ready i'll light the candle and just watch the candle sit this candle it's only a thin one so this will probably go down quite quickly and i'm just gonna watch it and sit with it so it's been quite a while since I've finished now and this is how the candle currently looks. It's taken quite a while to burn out actually, um, whew, a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Doesn't it look pretty? Just the way it's trickling down his little bushy leaves as well. He's now officially going to be my money tree. <laughs> Ooh, this is weird. It didn't, it wasn't sparking until, oh god, it's creating its own little flame next to it. That's why it's sparking. <laughs> I've had to be really careful because I think I put too many herbs in it so I'm literally starting a little fire up in here but these are the cards that I placed the magician to make movement in money matters we love to see it and yeah not long until this will be completely burnt out hello so uh, a few days have passed I don't even know where to begin update the <laughs> starting off with the creativity 100% sold on that one like it opened up a huge amount of self-discovery for me it made me realize that creativity isn't just part of a process that we do in order to like gain ideas for our boss or to get you know working on time it's everything to the point where it feels like a spiritual awakening, whatever that means. I know that sounds very far out there and I, this really does feel like I've opened up a portal to what the point of everything is and it is creative flow. How we can create a life for ourselves that serves us and makes everything feel like heaven on earth, literal heaven on earth. There's a really good video that covers this topic that I'm talking about now. I'll leave a link down there, but being creative is still required in non-creative types because we need 
to create. We are creators in order to manifest stuff up in our lives, to bring things like forward. That isn't just, you know, having an idea when you pick up a pen and paper. That's like having a really true idea of what it is you are, who you are, what you what your purpose is, what your identity is, like really experiencing creations around us and being aware of them, but also letting them be enough for us to truly be inspired by them, to create our own works and not to be the consumer of only other people's creations, such as like certain websites and apps that we become addicted to or like other people's way of living or like a lifestyle that our parents taught us to be, like those kind of things. They are all other people's creations and we're not creating ourselves. Therefore, we're not living the life that we want to live. Therefore, we're not manifesting. Spell work truly is actually just allowing the universe to show you what it is you need to know in those areas and under and uncovering things. Expose something in quite a raw way to you. Um, in a way, you kind of have to be careful that you're in the right mindset for that, to be honest with you, because I can see how that can get very exhausting. Like, I always thought, you know, if spells work, wouldn't you do them every day? To be constantly awakened in those spaces, I can see that being a bit much. I mean, it can sometimes be an instant thing, like you achieve something that you you were seeking and it just arrives. But I think a lot of people, it's not as easy as that because there's a process that needs to happen. There's some sort of journey and mission that needs to happen. And you've got to kind of like work through that before you can fully feel that the spell has worked, before you can fully feel that something manifests at the end of it. Let's talk about the money one, for example. A lot more opportunities and I had bookings and that felt good, the flow felt great. Doors are opening, orders are coming in. Shortly after that spell, I think it was the next day, I had a friend over and she wanted a, a one-on-one -on -one reading of me. And not only was she like super generous with the money that she offered me in thanks in exchange to that work I did for her, which itself obviously I'm massively grateful for. But in doing that, that is teaching me to have a different relationship with money we were talking about our relationship with money and and how important worth is and believing that you deserve something and being more open with the flow of money seeing it as a energy exchange rather than something that determines your worth or something that sits in your bank account as an exchange to the devil because you have a job that you don't like but you just need it to get paid i speak about this in my spiritual awakening video as well if you're interested in that but realizing the work that goes into what i earn is through doing something that i love can actually help me in attracting money because i'm not as tight with it i'm looser with it i let it go as much as i allow it in I'm trusting in letting it go. I'm trusting in letting it in. I don't think I don't deserve certain amount of money. Like for instance, when my friend paid me more than I would have asked her for, I let that in. I told myself that I supplied a gift that day and she, I'd like to think, <laughs> um, got a lot of help from it and appreciated it. And I move on. I trust that more will come as it will go. This links with the creative thing. It's interesting how I wouldn't think that creativity and money are a linked thing um, because in order for us to have a better flow in our financial situations, we need to be we need to be attracting money into our lives by creating something that is as close to our purpose and our joy and what that thing is that we have always wanted to do or we can't stop doing it's like in our nature <laughs> like when you can master that everything else starts flowing and making sense i'm really trying to see where flow can be introduced more into my life um some people will get this some people won't but it's all i can really think about at this point in time it's it's like a bright light that i can't stop looking at because it feels really good and it's making everything make sense that's what it feels like the spell's done for me. So I've been doing a lot of like self-work with my relationship with money and I'm seeing doors starting to open. I went to a local holistic shop that I've had in mind for a while. I Googled like 
holistic shop near me. Went in there the other day and the guy literally like asked me if I wanted a job there. <laughs> like, <laughs> I haven't taken it up yet, which is why I'm saying, you know, I don't know much about what's going to happen in that um, part, but he do, they do tarot readings there. And like, once again, I think these are like, lights that coming on in my life to say like come here there's stuff here that you need to know it, it's a hot it's really hard to describe unless you experience it and also you know these experiences don't come in fancy cloaks and and sparkly auras you don't get these experiences that come with a halo to make you aware that they are spiritual experiences they just kind of come about as natural normal everyday circumstances and that's why everyone always says like for spells to work you could be open you really do like you just have to trust the process and be like okay universe show me what it is you need to show me and sometimes it can be a lot and heavy so like don't do it on a week or a month where you feel like you got a lot like planned that shop i went to they do um everything there that i've been looking for this lady does a lot of like goddess um energy work on your inner warrior tree energy which is I would love to do that one day. Like the fact I went into that shop recently, discovered all of these pathways to like experimenting of different things to allow myself to be like as open to creating a future for myself that I resonate with a community as well opening up to me. I mean, it's, it's wild, you know? Oh, I'm also going to a medium night there tonight. To, to see a demonstration. So that should be exciting. Hello. <laughs> okay, so priming the house. I've burnt insects. I've insects. <laughs> I've burnt insects, everyone. A key essential part of the process. I've tried to wear and find as many green things as possible. I realize I don't have a lot of green. Anyway, I found this spell online. It does say to do it at night time, but my argument is that we are in new moon regardless <laughs> all around the world today is new moon it's the first of april it feels good i'm setting the house in that tone i'm going to be doing rituals tonight because there's a zoom call with mia magic and the life of sky sky life they're doing a little like rich online ritual that you can join so i'll be doing that tonight anyway so <sighs> I found this playlist on Spotify called Money Ma Manifestation. Pleasantly surprised. I was expecting the songs to be like, not feeling them. And the whole importance of everything is you've got to feel it. You can't just, for example, this should be done at nighttime, but cause I'm feeling it, I'm going with that. I need to always trust what feels right. I've been playing that, blasting that all day. Um, and I've got, uh, I've got a note here, which I will be wrapping cinnamon in. I've got two green candles, some coins, and crystals that feel very purposeful. But I found this um, Las Vegas poker chip. This I just happened to find in my jewelry stand the other day, so random. I think someone might have sent me that in my peer box a while ago. Frankincense, only cause that reminds me most of riches. So I'm going to rub that on there. And by the way, the candles I got were just these green ones here. You can get them in a lot of witchy shops. I'll link everything that I can down there in the video description. I've got my purse here as well. Um, and also my card here, but I'm going to put the note that's covered in cinnamon in here and put some cinnamon in my purse. And now I'm gonna coat the candle, light it, um, and I'm just gonna play some music. I'm going to coat the candle, light it, and sit with my intentions. I don't know what that noise was. Hello. Um, as you can probably tell by my hair, some time has passed. <laughs> Something I need to share about the last clip of me that you saw. It's so wild. So that day I finished the ritual and I hopped on straight over to do a live stream, which is something that I recently in itself only found the courage to do. Um, I've never gotten used to the idea of reading people's tarot cards like in a live stream. I've always found it to be very like, overwhelming and um i had my little green crystal that i just worked with sat next to me and i was receiving donation after donation after donation which is something not, like one that i've never ever had 
for years I've been like I've got the confidence to sit in front of like a online live audience but I guess reading is a different story you make like usually I mean with my kind of audience it's like very minimal in that like hour I was sat there um, around about 50 quid came in during that session and also a massive part of like removing my blockages and stuff is is being more understanding of like my worth my attitude about money and not thinking that I don't deserve it not thinking that someone shouldn't take away their funds for me and like that idea of exchanging I'm trying to embrace is more of like a flow and an exchange as it's an energy exchange and also replacing the word currency and money with something like blessings really helps because then it gets rid of that stigma I think that the word money tends to have where it's like dirty or something and I felt that money coming in and me instead saying to myself like hearing in my mind gratitude like I really appreciate that you chose to feel that I deserve this and therefore I will continue to serve straight after the live stream that week I mean this month I had pretty much like just order after order in readings and like it was just coming in at one point I was getting like a handful a day usually for me like I'll get uh, them in rushes so they'll kind of come in like threes or four so I might get like three a week but they all happen to order on the same day it's a weird thing that I've always noticed about making orders for me because they were kind of coming in like once a day that meant I was getting rushes every day because in my mind I was like oh when I get one order that no that's usually I know that means there's another one coming and then that meant another one came and then it would just to the point where um, where I've literally doubled in comparison to where I was at financially last year, this time last year. Like this year I've already made double what I had in April 2021. Believing that you deserve certain money, orders and attention and recognition and acknowledgement makes you pitch yourself a little bit better it makes you be more assertive about where your boundaries are like how much time you promise like you you promise yourself you would give to this customer and not going over that not doing more than what they've paid for or, or like making sure it's good like quality over quantity and it's also given me that confidence to to not undersell like um being honest about the hours i put into something and what that should be like transition translated to because I think a lot of artists will agree with that you put so much so many hours into stuff that never gets written down into anything before where, where I saw that as like a weakness because of years of being told from clients like big clients like company clients that you know oh someone else charges cheaper so I'm not gonna go with you in recognizing that I can stand aground and be like well I'm not gonna work with you at all because then you're opening yourself up to more time and energy that goes into those places where you are getting good results bouncing back so I'm like reprioritizing where my time and effort and energy goes because I know that it can be profited and like like abundance will come in more when I'm in those spaces so therefore let's say let's make sure I'm not like wasting loads of energy in the wrong areas subconscious stuff that you're like you pick up as a kid even if it doesn't speak very loud it's like sabotaging the stuff that you're actually consciously doing with your hands and your you know like those thoughts need to be working together i think at this point i feel very like aligned i think something i'm worried about is slipping out of this aligned <laughs> moment i'm getting where i feel my subconscious my conscious and divine is like all in one space and i'm like feeding from all of those three areas right now and i'm trying to work out ways that i can keep in touch with that in the future when possibly I kind of fall back out of that alignment. So I've also been looking up a lot of like um, local events in the area, as I said in the last clip as well. I've found a little community of people that I can talk to about this sort of stuff with to help me get back in touch with that. I'll finish this video on this note. There's so many different communities out there that you might not actually know exist right under your nose. Like me, for example, there's also a local 
um, studio where they do sound baths and like um, work associated to dancing and how you can like encourage that like flow in your life a little bit more. There's literally a mindful living office in my town. There is also a, um, a chakra lady <laughs> who works in this workshop and she does loads of like, the other day I noticed she did an event on um, Facebook where you can go to see her and do some um, pebble painting and she was painting the moon, fa the moon phases. Have a little dig locally to you. Go online on Facebook, have a look to see what communities near you exist, events, pages. There's even a um, local group of ladies who do new moon and full moon rituals with like huge log fires down on the beach, which is just like eight minutes from where I live. And they bring drums and everything. I've had different people pop into my life in, di in various different ways that have been speaking about methods such as like reflection gazing that helps you get in touch with who you are, of seeing yourself as an individual being and therefore helping you understand who that person is truly. Therefore, you're getting more in touch with your younger self, your creative self, your child self, and therefore you are feeling generally more creative and the flow is like coming in and out more so of you. Obviously like earning extra money temporarily is great, but it is temporarily. So the lessons that I've learned to get there has actually been like a whole lot more valuable because it's stuff that I can take with me, which will constantly earn me money, constantly help me manifest money and rather than just like a quick win. Thanks for listening. I hope you took something from this and thank you for joining me on this journey. I'm massively surprised about how everything's gone. I started this video very skeptical if I think back to the person that I was then. It's gonna be interesting for me, for me to watch it back and, and hear what I was saying because it's almost like I've gone from like a skeptic to like completely believing and wanting to promote the idea of money magic more. Another thing that's interesting is because I did so many, because I tried so many different things in this video, I don't know which one necessarily I, I would promote the most, like in terms of like ritual or like certain like spell or do you know what I'm saying? Like I tried so many different things. I don't necessarily know what I enjoy the most or what I find most powerful. Is it the crystals? Is it the um, cinnamon like note folding I did? Would it be the ritual that I did to do with the candle? I'm just gonna have to keep trying and experimenting and find what works for me the, the most. Maybe let me know in the comment section below your own personal favorites. But yes, thank you very much for watching. I will see you for my next video. If you liked this, do let me know so I know whether to make more videos like this. I'm on social media such as Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram if you wanna see behind the scenes stuff at Nincompoop. But I also have a tarot reading Facebook page and a kind of mystical Instagram where I post loads of like tarot based stuff, but also like ritual work, moon phase stuff. And that's Tarot with Ellie on Facebook and Mindfully Mystic on Instagram. Thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye.